Northwest wearing their all powder blues with the white trim and the red accents. Meanwhile, Kohoma coming in with the maroon and gray pants along with white jerseys and maroon helmets. Should be a great one tonight from Franklin Field in Senatobia. We're going to take one more final timeout before we bring you the broadcast coming your way from Senatobia next on Ranger TV. Getting started, Kohoma won the toss and deferred to Northwest, so it will be the powder blue clad Northwest Rangers who will drop back to get the kickoff here. Rangers, as we mentioned, two and one at home. Only home team, only home games they've lost in the last two seasons have come against the East Mississippi Lions. They're not trying to make a habit of losing to anybody else. And especially with the division still up for grabs, Russell. A lot to play for tonight. Uh, ab absolutely. And, you know, getting the opening kickoff, I'm going to be looking at Jabryson Abram. Every return that he has when the ball is in his hands, he makes something happen. But if that kick is not returned uh, to the house, I want to see the physicality immediately from this offensive line for Northwest. You're going to see Josh Eves kicking off the sophomore out of Starkville for Mississippi Delta. We'll get things underway with something of a squib hooking toward the northwest sideline. That'll bound out of bounds and not give Northwest an opportunity to return. So we will see Keegan Patterson and Stan Hill running the offense. Patterson, the quarterback. Hill, his offensive coordinator and former quarterback. Of course, famously for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Patterson, most recently on the scout team at Southern Cal last year, has come in and has... Found his form, I think, at different times this year, Russell. He's had some games where he's had very low completion numbers, but he's always been able to complete longer passes. Absolutely, and it's just about the consistency, being able to complete passes to wide open wide receivers. So they will start from the 35-yard line to begin their first possession. Patterson in the gun. Quick throw, left side. That pass is picked off. Well anticipated by the defense. It's Nicholas Townsend running the first play from scrimmage. Back for a house call. Kohoma strikes early in surprising fashion. And yes, that is definitely not the start that you want to see from Northwest. And you look at Keegan Patterson throwing a timing pattern to the out. Cornerback sits. You cannot throw an out cut late. The ball was late. Pick six. That is as bad a mistake as Keegan Patterson and the Ranger offense can make nine seconds into this contest to give a team that has not scored an offensive touchdown in their last eight quarters a defensive touchdown from the first gun. And when you look at this football team, it has been led by its defense. When you look at statistically, this defense is better statistically than it shows because the offense has played so poorly. They've been able to make a lot of plays. They've been able to get turnovers, as you see here tonight. They start off on the first, first possession with a pick six. A Cannon Motors touchdown, the first of the game, scored by Kohoma. They lead it 7 to nothing here on Ranger TV. Taking action for you every day. Your stories deserve to be told. And we've got the best storytellers right in your community. Shorts, reels, tweets, and content that play out live on TV or in your hand. You name it, we're on it. Get those stories anywhere you are. Here, 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 and of course, here. We're storytellers focused on Memphis. Focused on taking action for you. Action News 5. Find us, well, anywhere. Suddenly, the Northwest Rangers behind the eight ball with a 35-yard interception return for a touchdown on the first play from scrimmage thrown by Keegan Patterson 
into the waiting arms of the freshman defensive back Nicholas Townsend, the freshman out of Pontotoc, Mississippi, has given Coloma an early 7-0 lead here on the road in Senatobia. So Northwest will field their first kickoff of the contest with Jabryston Abram running it out to the 27-yard line before he's going to be stopped along the hash marks. Now you're talking about lighting a fire behind a football team. Now your first possession, you get a pick six. Let's see how this football team now responds to being down early 7-0. Northwest for the second week in a row facing some early adversity against a team that had not scored the football particularly well coming into this contest. As we mentioned, Coahoma had scored less than two touchdowns per game entering this game, and they get an early touchdown from their defense. This is Keegan Patterson. He'll put the ball on the belly of his back, and deep or team. We'll rush it forward across the 35-yard line out to about the 36. The umpire getting knocked over on the way. Second play from scrimmage. First play, pick six, last drive. Offensive line opens up a nice hole there for deeper teeth. He always runs hard, moves forward. Rangers will use three backs rotating tonight. It is Xavier Davis in there on second down to try and get things going for the Ranger offense. They put Rashard Daniels in motion. Up the middle, Davis with a nice cut to his right. Gains his way out to the 40. That's first down yardage. And I talked about establishing the run, physicality up front by the offensive line. Two straight run plays, picks up the first down. Your running backs are now getting into a rhythm early. And I think also, Tyler, when you look at your quarterback, you want to settle your quarterback down, especially his first throw of the football game. Last series goes for a pick six. You want to settle him down. Uh, so now when it's time for him to complete some passes, he'll be settled. First down for the Rangers from their own 40-yard line. Northwest averaging 20 first downs per game. Play action this time. Patterson going to torch one down the sideline. He's got a man wide open. Dropped. Going to be a long rest of the night until Rashard Daniels can make another catch. Excellent play call by Stan Hill. You look at faking the outside screen. You got a down and up there by your slot receiver. Wide open, simply drops it. This is something now when you look at a young football team, they have to get in rhythm. They have to be able to concentrate, and that's two bad plays here thus far offensively. Daniels now aligned in the slot, near side right. The wide out this side, Janoris Hobson. Play action. Quick screen this time. Hobson's got it up the sideline using the stiff arm to get out to the 49. Close to first down yardage. That makes it third and manageable. Again, getting the football out of Patterson's hand. Quick screen outside to Hobson. He's able to pick up eight. So third and two officially as Northwest uses tempo. The give. Davis, nice one cut off right guard for the first down. Still going, breaking tackles inside the 45 to the 43 of Cohon. And you talk about physicality, not only the offensive line, but the running backs have to run physical, and that's the way to run the football. Xavier Davis keeps his legs moving, picks up the first down. Davis, as we mentioned, coming off his first 100-yard rushing game of the season last week against Delta. Got off for 14 carries, 105 yards, and two scores. Three wide, Kyler Hutton out to the far side in the three-man receiving core. Patterson feeding Davis. Davis plunging forward, gains about five, but a flag flies from behind the quarterback. I think it's going to be holding on 73, Dylan Spencer. Left guard is where Davis ran behind. And that game won't count. Cam Young will take his place and try to dig the Rangers out of this hole as they are now behind the sticks. It'll be first down from about the 48-yard line. You know, right now, uh, you know, this offense just needs to settle down, settle down and put together a couple of positive plays. Got him to jump. Patterson takes the shot. He's got Hobson. Hobson complete back into enemy territory. Patterson is complete and 
We'll see if they take the penalty or the pass. So it'll be a five-yard penalty. Northwest will take it. And they'll have the ball spotted at the 45. Hang on, there's still flags down on the far side. And the ball should probably come back to about the 47 if they were working from the 48 last time. Or they'll just do... Yeah, there we are. From the right hash. 11.46 to go here in the opening quarter. Northwest trying to battle out of an early 7-0 hole. With Keegan Patterson at the controls. Kohoma threatening blitz. Northwest going to check the call to the sideline. DJ Harden is the offset tight end to the right. They'll motion Young out of the backfield. Patterson throwing left side. This ball incomplete. Nearly picked off on the far side. Do they say catch by Rashard Daniels or incomplete? There's going to be an official discussion right here. Daniels slid to try and make the grab. And this will, in fact, be an incompletion. It looked initially like Kohoma almost had picked the pass off. But it went through the defender's hand. Daniels tried to make a slide and grab that they ruled no catch. Well, you look at that cover four defense, and you had a hole, almost like a back shoulder fade for Daniels to be able to come back and catch the football. And still a little bit timing is off because I think Daniels was suspecting the football more up the numbers, and it was thrown slightly behind him. They'll go four wide this time on second down south of the sticks. Swing round. Cam Young's turn. Young with a seam. Inside the 35, makes it third and three. Now you look at Keegan and Patterson there. You know, you have a swing route outside. He immediately look at the coverage, gets the football uh, in his hands, and he's able to make some good positive yardage there on second down. Tempo on third down. Patterson, short roll, throwing to Young. It's incomplete. Might have heard the footsteps coming there. Did not bring it in with Jashun Simon bearing down on him. You know, Simon is able to get in the face of Keegan Patterson. There, You had the same play. You just went to the opposite side, getting Cam Young outside in the flat. Ball thrown a little bit too early, off target, not able to get the completion. So Northwest unable to operate with tempo there. They turn to fourth down. Rangers 11 of 18 on fourth down conversions this year. Bunch right. Patterson has options. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage. A big turnover on downs forced by a Oklahoma side that continues to build momentum for themselves. Again, you look at it offensively, just really out of sync. Not able to put a couple of plays back-to-back, -back, big fourth down. Um, offensive line not able to get the hands down from the defenders. Really another big play here on fourth and three by this defense for Oklahoma. So their first two possessions... For Northwest and with a pick six and a turnover on downs. This is Kohoma's first time with the football at the 10:33 mark here in quarter number one. A first down handoff will go to the back. Palmer on the carry for almost no gain, maybe one or two on the play as he falls forward. Now we talked about this defensive front here for Northwest. Really good job of stalemating, getting in the gaps, the A and the B gaps, pretty much for a short game, maybe of one. The Kohoma quarterback is Andrew Moore, the freshman out of South Haven, specifically DeSoto Central High School. The give once again is to Marlon Palmer, who's trusty back, who's been the main option all year. Freshman out of Greenville Christian at 5'8", 210 pounds. Another short gain between the tackles. And you look thus far now, it seems like this Kohoma team is trying to establish the run here early. Kohoma wanted to go quickly. Facing a Ranger defense that is stingy on third downs. Giving up 35%. More from the gun. 
Play action over the middle, incomplete. Trying to pick out Nicholas Taylor on an in-breaking route. Couldn't get it connected. Hey, that's a great job there by Keyshawn Davila there. Man-to-man -man coverage outside here for the Rangers. Davila comes back from off the hash and able to disrupt that pass, knock it down at the break point. Now that's a good series for your defense. When you see your offense struggling, that's the type of series that you need from your defense to get the football back to your offense and see if they can generate something positive here on their third possession. So Northwest figuring to take over after the punt upcoming from Cohoma. Raymond Morales to send it away. Great spiraling kick drives Brad Adams all the way inside his own 15. Adams from the right hash will work left toward the middle of the field. Good balance gets him across the 30. That's a, that's a really good job there of catching the football. It was a booming kick, able to catch the football uh, and really get upfield to get some yardage. And that's the thing about a punt. When you outkick your coverage, it gives the returner room to set up his blocks. And um, that's what Adams was able to do. So once again, Stan Hill's bunch with an opportunity to start fresh. After turning the ball over in four-down territory on their last drive, a team that has generally been good in this year, but getting there, to what's officially the Wade Incorporated Green Zone. It's been a little trying so far. Patterson, first down give. He'll try deep Pertit. Pertit with a burst to the left side. Has about eight yards on first down. Yeah, great job there by Pertit. Able to bounce the football outside. Nice vision, nice balance. Good job initially for the offensive line to keep the defensive line there on the line of scrimmage. And Pertit is able to outrun the linebackers for a gain of eight. Mark Dorsey, the safety, the leading tackler for this Cohoma defense with a push out far side. They'll work from the pistol once more. Same play, other side. Pertit, big lane, into enemy territory. Rips off a huge run for Northwest. Again, when you look at Pertit, he is the running back that's able to get a lot of yardage, and he's the only running back that has multiple runs over 25, and he shows the speed, the agility, the balance there to pick up a big, huge gain here. 31-yard ramble for D. Pertit. Brings up first down for the Rangers at the 30. Pertit again to the right side. Massive hole that you could drive a truck through. He's inside the green zone. Another first down. Now I love how this offense has responded, but in particular this offensive line, and it's something that I pointed out, the physicality here up front, and then you see it here on this drive. Back-to-back -back first down rushes for D. Pertit off the right side of that offensive line featuring Cameron Pascal and Melvin Collins, Jr., into the red zone they go for the first time tonight. Pertit, this time, lassoed in the backfield. Solid playmaking there for the defense. Kobe Smith coming up for his linebacker spot for Cohoma. Yeah, Kobe Smith along with a couple of other defenders there for Cohoma, able to shoot through the gap there for, I think, a loss of one. Second down south of the sticks for Northwest. Half the first quarter elapsed. Patterson. Time to throw. Whirls one left side. Corner throw. Caught. Touchdown, Rangers. What a scintillating grab for J.D. Ferguson. Outstanding grab by J.D. Ferguson. You're talking about climbing the ladder and taking the football off the defender's helmet. That's exactly what J.D. Ferguson was able to do. But I like the pass by Keegan Ferguson. We talked about... Patterson we talk about him being consistent that's the way to throw it in the bucket but throw it high enough where only your wide receiver can make that play excellent throw by Patterson better catch by your wide receiver J.D. Ferguson Jackson Elston the freshman out of Hernando tie for the national lead in field goals made this year with nine looking to convert the extra point and does even at seven seven sixteen to go here in the first quarter in Senatobia back with more on Ranger TV When television first came to the state of Tennessee, the tower wasn't built on Rocky Top, and the cameras were not focused on Nashville's opera. The birth of WMC brought the golden age of television to Memphis first. And since that day, we have given the Bluff City a voice like never before. We are 12% of America, 40% of Memphis, and we have something to say. From our greatest tragedy. Martin Luther King was shot and was killed tonight in Memphis, Tennessee. 
to the sweetest joy. Memphis Tigers and their quest for a national championship. We have been here through it all. Sometimes the outside world doesn't understand us. They see our pain, but miss our pride, the grit, and the grind. You don't have to be from Memphis to be a Memphian, but if you're one of us, you know. So as Action News 5 begins our next 75 years, we are going to tell the world that this is my Memphis. We hope you will too. Tarek Latham drifting back to catch this one at his own six yard line. Breaks left, changed direction going right, and gets tied up just inside the 25 yard line. So Kohoma will take over now, squared with Northwest at seven apiece, closing in on the seven minute mark here in the first quarter at Senatobia. Well, that's a great answer offensively here by the Rangers, but it's all set up by complimentary football the last series by the defense, three and out. You get the football, and now you're able to settle down offensively and make some really big plays, but it started offensively with that offensive line. Just like last week when Northwest scored twice in the opening half of the football game on two-minute drives or less, they score here on a 69-yard drive that took a little over the two-minute mark. Andrew Moore quarterbacking for Kohoma. Look out! Nothing he can do about the penetration right there. Huge play that time for Tristan Shorter. Oh, man, great job by Tristan Shorter. You talk about a run blitz. That's the way to shoot through and make a play in the backfield. Now this defense here is stepping up, making some huge plays, and this is a football team here that has struggled offensively. That's the type of plays that you need here early. Loss of six on the play after the tackle from the linebacker Shorter out of Oxford High School. Moore stands in the pocket on second down, connects with the receiver. Good yardage up the sideline, near side, before he's finally tugged down. Destin Wheeler, the freshman out of South Haven, on the catch. Well, you look at Wheeler there. He was able to run a curl route, and he's able to duck and dip back outside and broke a couple of tackles there for that first down. But you had him corral, uh, unable to make that tackle, and that's something that the defense has struggled with at times is corralling and making tackles. Wheeler, the former high school teammate of quarterback Andrew Moore, hooked up with him again. Moore. Going down the middle here, incomplete. That time overthrew Wheeler with some solid coverage on the play for Northwest. Great coverage there by LJ Shumper. Tries to go back to Wheeler on the deep post. Shumper stays right in his hip pocket. Blanket coverage there by Shumper. Moore getting the start tonight. Second start of the season. Threw for over 2,200 yards as a high school senior last year at DeSoto Central. Not a big quarterback, but does have a good arm. Northwest sending the house here. Moore, eluding pressure. Throws it in the dirt in order to get to third down. Oh, man, delay blitz there by Dylan Bullard. You know, had him in the grass, but that penetration, that pressure on that delay blitz was able to disrupt the timing there offensively here for Kahoma. Kahoma, that time targeting Livingston Cody, the tight end. They've got two out-of-state tight ends in Livingston Cody and Mikel Lavery that they will throw to. Third down here. Should be an interesting play call from first-year play caller Alan Cross, the former Memphis Tiger. Moore takes the low snap, sets up, going to have to use his legs. Not going to get there. A swarm of Rangers keep him from the first down. Well, that was actually a coverage sack. Excellent job there in the secondary, playing a little bit of zone, a cover three type of zone. No wide receivers were open. Good job underneath there by the defensive backs, the linebackers, to come up and make the tackle. So this will be fourth down for Kohoma. And they will send the punt unit on. So for the second time today, we will see the talents of Raymond Morales, the freshman out of Bay Springs. Morales kick, a lower one this time. Will still outkick the coverage by plenty. All the way to Adams, the 25. Splits the seam. Adams working upfield in enemy territory. A solid return for the freshman from Tupelo. Great job there by Adams. You talk about outkicking the coverage. The difference is did not have any hang time. Adams is able to catch the football on the run. Get outside there for an excellent punt return. Fred Adams, who has been playing as reserve in the secondary has been great on punt return so far this year and this one going to be the best field position the Rangers are going to have probably in this first half they're going to start 
at the plus 40 yard line with under five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Patterson, quick strike, right side. Good yardage gain all the way down to the 30 that time by Janoris Hobson. Yeah, good catch and run by Hobson, but you look at the motion by D.J. Harden. He's able to come back from the tight end position, get the kick out block outside with the cornerback. First down northwest, they'll go tempo again. Davis trying to get to the edge, angles that way, breaks inside for a second, then gets piled on by a couple of Coahoma tacklers. You know, good job by you talk about the up-tempo here, now trying to get this defense off balance, being able to get some creases in the run. Logan Miles and Mark Dorsey on the stop for the Tigers. Again, another quick run. Davis, left with a cutback, comes right. Davis has a block. Davis with an angle toward the end zone. He's in. 22-yard touchdown for Xavier Davis. Great job by Xavier Davis. You look initially, the run goes there to the left-hand side. He's able to have the vision to make the cutback all the way over here to the near side and take it to the house for a touchdown. But that's still excellent blocking there by your offensive line because no one was able to penetrate from the backside. I don't know if we'll get a second look at that one, but I think it was Janoris Hobson who had the block out on the perimeter just above the numbers that sprang Davis toward the front pylon. And usually when you have long runs, why receivers have to block downfield. And, you know, that's what I like about this receiving course thus far. If you're not getting the football, make sure that you're blocking downfield. But then again, I think this offense now is getting into a rhythm. Defensively is playing excellent to get the football back to them. Excellent punt return. So that's how you play on all three phases. Offense, defense, and special teams. Excellent execution offensively for the score. For the second time this game, Northwest able to score a Cannon Motors touchdown. This one comes from beyond the Wade Incorporated Green Zone, believe it or not, with a 22-yard run from Xavier Davis. Third touchdown for Davis in his last two games on the ground. We know this running back core for Northwest is really deep. It just depends on any given game. It could be any of the three guys, Young, Pertit, or Davis. It just happens to be Davis in recent weeks. And he continues that trend. A stable of running backs in is something that, you know, we talked about earlier in the pregame, being able to establish the run. Now establish the run. Now you'll be able to see some passes that's going to open up downfield because those linebackers will begin to creep up in the box. Coahoma's Tarek Latham will take it from his own six. They're going to run a little trick play. It's to Marquise Willis. Willis along the left side comes across the numeral at 25 before finally being wrangled close to the 30. They ran one actual fake and then a secondary fake fake before getting the ball to Marquise Willis. Hey, now that's an excellent job there by your kick coverage team because actually, as you talked about, you had a reverse. Then you fake the reverse going back again to the other side, and that's the, what you do have to do in the, in the close side here. Stay in your lanes. Good job there by the kick coverage team. So now you've given Scott Oakley, the special teams coordinator for Northwest, a little more to think about for the next kickoff in case he has to count for the fake and then the fake of the fake. Absolutely. I, I just think, you know, when you look at special teams and this football team that has struggled offensively, you have to expect the unexpected. And that's a great job of Scott Oakley preparing his football team for some of these gadget plays on special teams. Andrew Moore has first down from his own 29. High snap, has to jump to grab it. Pressure almost got there, and he somehow escapes. Moore shouldered out before he's got first down yardage. He'll pick up nine, though. Yeah, Andrew Moore is able to get outside from where the blitz and the pressure came from. Uh, a little void area when you blitz from that side. Uh, that's really a good pickup there individually by this young quarterback, Andre Moore. Destin Wheeler and Livingston Cody, the two wide receivers, split to the left side for Moore here on second and short. A rush of four by Northwest. They find Cody near sideline. He's got the first down. Struggling to bring tacklers with him out to the 48-yard line. A good pickup there by Livingston Cody. Yeah, you look at Livingston Cody there. He's more like an outlet uh, playing that tight, tight end position. Nothing open down the football field. Moore is able to throw to the outlet in the flat. Uh, picks up the first down. Cody out of Columbia, Missouri. Makes the grab. We'll see him and some of Mikel Aber tonight. The freshman from Troy, Alabama. It's first down at the 49, under three minutes to go in the first quarter. And this looks like Marquise Willis as a signal caller. He'll feed the back. Marlon Palmer swallowed whole that time. Absolutely no running room, and Jalen Johnson made sure of it. 
You know, that, now that's an excellent job by your defensive front, looking at your offensive line, getting your keys, getting your reads, and able to get in and use your quickness and power to make a huge tackle in the backfield. We thought they might go a little bit of Marquise Willis at quarterback in this game. We spoke about his pedigree. Older brother is the backup quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, Malik Willis. Willis has played more wide receiver at the JUCO level, but was a high school quarterback and a little more imposing presence as a signal caller than Andrew Moore. They'll go back to Moore on second and long with four wide. Northwest will send five. Moore, indecision, hesitation. Moore's going to get back to the line of scrimmage just barely before taking a knock on the shoulder. Hey, that's the way to come up there by Ja'Cory Jones. And you look at second and long, man free with a safety in the middle, excellent coverage down the football field, and Moore had to try to tuck it and run. They say officially no gain on the play. So third down behind the sticks for Cohoma. They've got to get to the Northwest 41. Crowd noise building here deep in the first quarter in a seven-point game. Moore against the four-man rush. Has the lane. Moore's going to take off. Bad decision. Just crossed half field. A gain of about four on the play. Didn't get much further. You, you know, I love what defensive coordinator Paige Anders is doing defensively. He switches some things up. And I think when you look at this wide receiver core, whether it's the wide receivers not having the speed to get deep or just thinking that you're going to get there with the pass rush, playing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage on early downs, mixing it up on third down. I said that's a bad decision, Russell. Do you disagree and say maybe that's the, the best option you've got if you don't have any options? I think when you look at trying to run the football with the quarterback, you don't want to get into a bad position by throwing the football and get an interception. Now you want to look at your defense. Your defense has been pretty much the strength of your team and see if they can come up with another big play. Raymond Morales with another punt to Fred Adams, who has been strong on the returns tonight. Got out of one leg tackle before he's going to be do -si do with around the 27. So three consecutive punts for this Cohoma offense. You see why they deferred after winning the toss. Their offense is not their strong suit right now. Absolutely uh, not. And, and this defense here for Northwest is not making it easier for them. And I just love the way this back end is playing. They're playing complimentary football with the defensive front. On the back end, they're covering, and they're making this young quarterback having to tuck and run. And, again, you talk about three and out offensively is filling it. They have the momentum. See if they can put together another drive here and, and put together a score. 26 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Northwest with a one-touchdown lead as Keegan Patterson takes command once again. First down handoff. Cam Young spinning through tacklers. Over to the 35. Ball came out late. Was that ball down? He's down. Yes, it was. Nathan Wiggins, the defensive coordinator, for Cohoma, shouting that the ball was live and is not what the official saw on the play. And now Cam Young is getting a chance to get his opportunity to run the football. He wants to eat a little bit. Offensive line doing an excellent job. Cam follows his blockers and able to pick up nine. We'll see how Northwest continues to build on their first quarter. Started slow, started surprisingly, but they've now taken a seven-point lead on Cohoma. Back with more on Ranger TV in a moment. Ready to give your valuable asset the care it deserves? At Dipsticks, we understand that your vehicle is more than just transportation. It's your freedom, your personality, and usually your first or second most valuable asset. That's why we prioritize your vehicle's health, treating it with the care it deserves. Our team of skilled technicians is dedicated to providing dependable work with attention to detail. When you choose Dipsticks, you're not just getting an oil change. You're getting peace of mind. Trust your valuable asset to the experts at Dipsticks. Dipsticks, come to us for a change. Everyone's journey starts from a different place, but the path to your goals is always Northwest. Northwest Mississippi Community College has more than 90 education pathways, so you can choose the training that's right for you. Need in-demand skills now with high-paying opportunities just around the corner? We can get you there. See a four-year degree in your future, but need an efficient path to that dream? We can get you there, too. Whatever your goals, we can help you become who you want to be. Find your path at Northwest. Second quarter about to start here on Ranger TV. Northwest on top, 14-7 with the football and second and short from their own 35-yard line. And when you look at second and short, it's definitely offensive down. May look at some play action, take a shot going deep. Patterson on the give. Feeds the back. 
Cam Young slashing forward, a one-cut run. He's got first down yardage all the way out to the 43. Yeah, I, I love the way he runs the football. Has a low center of gravity, but he's a slasher. He makes those one step, puts his foot in the ground, and gets left and right and able to have the power to get upfield. Good, good run there by Cam. Young with his second carry of the night. The other two backs from Northwest, Xavier Davis, Namari, and Petit, each with 50-plus yards on the ground in the first quarter. Three wide to the field side. The give is to Young once again. Meets the tackler. Made a meal of him, but couldn't go much further as Jarrell Irving stopped his progress. Well, that's really a, a good job there by Jarrell Irving. He's able to shed the offensive lineman and, and get into that B gap there. So second down and about nine, maybe eight and a half to go. The line to gain is going to be the 46 in Cohoma territory. For Keegan Patterson, who's recovering from throwing a first play interception for a touchdown. Young, once again, this time working between Collins and Pascal, the guard and the tackle on the right side for another sizable game. Yeah, when you're looking at this, this offensive lineman, they are creating another line of scrimmage about five yards down the football field. They are pushing this defensive front back. And they'll use Temple once again here. This time he breaks left. Young flipped off his feet, but has the first down into enemy territory down to the 35. Again, I just love the physicality. I love the way this offensive lineman, they are playing in sync. And unfortunately, following the play, something earned a flag thrown. I think this is going to go against Northwest. Yeah, I think that's excessive celebration there at the end. Uh, kind of stood over Cam Young. I think Jajarian Webb is going to have a conversation when he goes back to the sideline about what you can and cannot do to cost your defense on a drive where Northwest has already got momentum, right? And and now when you, you, you look at a team that has struggled, uh, coming in one and five, struggling offensively, defensively, has been their strength. This offensive line is taking the will from this defensive football team. So now first down at the 22-yard line. The give. This time per team. Wiggling his way forward, able to weave inside the Wade Incorporated green zone for second down. Yeah, that was a good tackle there by Brandon Hall. Shoestring tackle right in the hole. Bertit had a little bit of daylight. That's a good job there. Seen a couple of co-home players go down the last couple of snaps. One down here on the near side. Could certainly be cramps. It's been fairly pleasant across the Mid-South here despite the late date in October. Last couple of days. And then you look at offensively, the up-tempo. And, you know, going back to the offensive coordinator, Stan Hill, you look at your quarterback struggle on the first series, first pass throws, a pick six. He's able to get his running game established, get his quarterback settled down. He's made a couple of quick throws. Uh, but the up-tempo, the up-tempo now, you have to have communication with your defense. And now that, that gets them communicating, now you're able to get them off balance to pretty much run what you want uh, because you're winning on first down, Tyler, winning on early downs, and now – you're able to kind of pick and choose the plays that are working for you. Kobe Smith, the freshman backer out of Cleveland, Mississippi, the one who's now walking off gingerly under his own power. But you're right about the up-tempo, Russell. I don't know if it's just getting to a certain point in the season where you're comfortable with it or it's a matchup thing for Stan Hill, but this is the most that they, we have seen the Rangers use an up-tempo pace to their offense, and it's working especially to get the ball moving on the ground. They've got second down here inside the red zone. The feed to Pertit. Again, ankle tackled, scrambles forward, walking on his hands there for a moment, nearly got to the marker. Man, great balance there by Pertit. You know, he's hit initially, lower down by the ankle, still able to keep his balance there and get about four or five yards. Quick snap again. Left side, Pertit, looking to wiggle out of another tackle. He's inside the 10. He's got first down yardage for Northwest. It'll be first and goal here early in the second quarter. That's nice awareness there by Petit. He gets outside initially, and instead of him trying to go sideways, he realizes that he needs to only pick up one, gets his shoulders parallel, and able to pick up the first down. 
But, Tyler, going back to what we were talking about as far as the up-tempo, that's just an outstanding job by your offensive coordinator, Stan Hill, mixing things up to get your quarterback and your offense in rhythm. Oklahoma certainly would not have seen that much of up-tempo if they watched the tapes from earlier in the year. This time, Cam Young swarmed on just inside the 10-yard line, didn't have much to work with. Now you look at this defensive front, don't have a whole lot of real estate, so now they're able now to get you know sturdy up front and be able to get into both of those gaps. Look at a little bit of play-action pass here. Ball has stayed on the ground for the last couple of snaps. J.D. Ferguson with a touchdown. The first of the game for the Rangers a few minutes ago in the first quarter is split wide to the left. Brian Abram in the slot left. Katie Gibson wide right. Patterson on the give. Bouncing inside this time. Close to the goal line, inside the five, but not quite enough is Cam Young. And then you look at the movement there by your tight end, DJ Harden. He's able to move. Now it lets the quarterback and the offensive lineman pretty much know where the Mike linebacker is. Big hole. They'll run it again, but there was a flag at the snap. This is going to be a false start on Northwest when it was third down and two to the goal line. Tempo does ask a lot of your linemen. Mm -hmm. They asked a little bit too much on that snap of Cameron Pascal. Yeah, that's, a, that's the first time that we've kind of seen some miscommunication in a mental mistake there, but, you know, offensive linemen have been doing an excellent job, maybe getting a little tired, getting a little antsy. Pascal, the right tackle for this Northwest team, recently committed verbally to the University of Memphis. Great to see that he's going to get an opportunity at the next level. Absolutely, that's good, going to the Tigers. Uh, can never have, have too many offensive linemen. I hear that. Patterson on a rollout. Very little coverage right side. Finds a man in the end zone. Did he hang on? Yes, touchdown, Northwest. Make it a double for J.D. Ferguson. And that's the play action pass that I was talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, J.D. Ferguson is able to run the back line of the end zone. But Patterson makes that play happen. He gets outside of the tackle box. Now he allows the defense to be able to come up. Ferguson's wide open on the back of the end zone. Ferguson, Ferguson took a shot to the ribs there. Looked like the ball came a little bit jarred loose, but not enough to fall out of his clutch. Jackson Uston. Slices the field goal through. It is a 21-7 Northwest lead following the extra point here on Ranger TV. Taking action for you every day. Your stories deserve to be told. And we've got the best storytellers right in your community. Shorts, reels, tweets, and content that play out live on TV or in your hand. You name it, we're on it. Get those stories anywhere you are. Here, 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 and of course, here. We're storytellers focused on Memphis. Focused on taking action for you. Action News 5. Find us, well, anywhere. J.D. Ferguson, the second Ranger wide receiver this year to have a two-touchdown game with both coming in the first half. He joins Janoris Hobson in that category. Seven-yard touchdown grab by Ferguson makes it a 21-7 lead for Northwest over the visiting Coahoma Tigers as Jackson Huston gets set to kick off. Coahoma trying to take every break they can get as the ball bounds out of bounds, letting Northwest set them up because their offense has not been the thing that they have led with. Their defense has been much stronger in this contest. And again, the out-of-bounds kickoff, we've seen that directional kick, Russell. Sometimes that's just what you're going for as a special teams coordinator. It's okay if you miss a little bit on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at, you know, Jackson Olselton trying to pin the return to the sidelines. is always a tough kick, uh, but you get it at the 35-yard line. But as good as your defense has been playing, um, you know, you'll live with that. So this is Coahoma to take over. They have punted on their three offensive possessions. Their only score coming on a pick six in the first play of the game. They begin here with 10-18 to go in the second quarter from their own 35. Andrew Moore calling the signals. Had a little trouble with the snap. Moore's going to be buried behind the line of scrimmage. Keon Cunningham leading the charge to keep the quarterback to no game. Yeah, good job by Cunningham. And just overall with this defense again winning on first down, now putting this offense in a pass type of predicament. Now this is a defensive down 
now defensively you can dictate what you want to run against this offense that has struggled throughout the season and is also struggling tonight. Moore, as we mentioned, the freshman getting his second start out of the Soto Central High School in South Haven. This one goes over his head. Trouble for the snapper and the snap too. Moore will fall on it inside his 10-yard line as he was feeling the heat from Tristan Shorter. And, and to me, that's an testament of how well the defense has been playing. Defensive line has been playing outstanding. Center wants to get the football back on time. Snaps is over his head. Another big break here for this Northwest Rangers defense. Now I think it's third and has to drive all the way to Memphis uh, on this third and forever. More or less. It'll be a long way up 55 to get the first down. The line to gain is the 45 ball at the 12th. Moore throws left side, has a completion short, and he's going to be stopped at the 25. Solid open field tackling that time for Northwest in the defensive backfield by the veteran Charles Thomas. Yeah, can't say enough about this defense playing outstanding, and that's something that I talked about. This defense, it was imperative for them to get off to an early start, pretty much pick off where they did last week in the second half against Delta, uh, able to shut out Delta, and they're doing an excellent job here tonight. So for the fourth consecutive offensive possession, Kohoma will punt. you got to be careful of this snap as well, even though the long snapper in the center, not the same player. The kick from Morales will be fair caught by Fred Adams at his own 42. That's where Northwest will take over. You know them from their hits like Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy, Lost in This Moment, and Coming to Your City. Now they're coming to our city. Country music superstar duo Big and Rich featuring Cowboy Troy are coming to the Heindel Center for the Performing Arts this Saturday night. The October 21st show has tickets still available online at HeindelCenter.org. Be sure to check that out this weekend. On first down, solid carry by D. Pertit. He's got first down yardage, knocked over a man on his way deep in enemy territory. Hard to put down. D. Pertit just simply does not like the ground. Man, Pertit is running the football hard. Just it reminded me of Marshawn Lynch type of run. Man, he's running through these defenders here for Kahoma. Gives Northwest a first down at the 44-yard line. Clock ticking under eight minutes to play until halftime. The give this time snuffed out. We've seen solid playmaking night by Kobe Smith, who's back in there after cramping up a few plays ago. Kahoma sets Northwest behind the chains. Yeah, that's a good timing there by Smith. Uh, able to anticipate the timing and was able to get outside, uh, beat the stands for the offensive line. Play action. Patterson slings it right side, hit him right in the face mask, and D.J. Harden couldn't hold on. Oh, man, excellent play fake. Fake the dive. You get your tight end up the hash, up the seam. Um, you know, no, he hasn't caught a lot of passes, but that's one that you have to have hit him right between the numbers. Make it Josh Humes, who was looking for his first catch of the season and could not come away with it despite a strong throw from Patterson. Third and long again. Three wide out to the right side. I wonder if they check out Kyler Hutton here solo to the near side left. Patterson, eyes over the middle, deep down the middle. Post route overthrown by just a step. John Norris Hobson was the man intended for the pass. Nicholas Taylor in coverage. Yeah, I like the throw. You get man-to-man -man coverage, you go for your deep post there. Uh, but again, excellent coverage there by Nicholas Townsend. And just, you know, speaking with their defensive back coach earlier, you know, from Pontotoc, he's a freshman. Has a lot of ball skills, good hips, nice transition, recognizes routes, the route concept. Excellent coverage there. And came away earlier with a pick six in this game. Could be hard to contend with. Rugby style kick from Shade Foster. Bounds inside the 15 and will kick there at the six. 
Solid flip of the field position from the punt unit for Northwest, even though it was nearly blocked. Yeah, good, do- good job by, by Foster. Really able to speed up the punt and elude the defender with the rugby punt. First punt of the contest for Northwest with 6.46 to go here in the second quarter after three consecutive scoring drives. We'll turn things over to Kohoma. You wonder if things keep going like this with four consecutive punts, how long they stay with Andrew Moore? Well, you know, this is the type of game that you want to play defensively. You know, take the wheel from a team that's struggling. Uh, Now they have to have something happening deep in their own territory. This is Marquise Willis on the snap. Quarterback power left side. The Northwest defensive line trying to bottle up the mobile QB, and they do. Keon Cunningham in on the stop along with a couple others. Northwest has Kohoma dead to rights on their first play with Marquise Willis carrying the football. Yeah, now, you know, defensively, you do not want to give up a big play. You have them pinned in deep into their own territory. Look for some starter goals, some double moves, or some type of trickery here offensively for Kahoma. Starting from their own seven. Second down. Quick sling right, incomplete. Trying to find the back out of the backfield that time, Andre Haynes, who's been used in a dual receiving and rushing role this year. Behind Marlon Palmer. Third and long. Marquise Willis played quarterback one one game last year, went 14 of 22 with two touchdowns, four picks for 160 yards. He's got the music turned up for third down. I see Andrew Moore's back in the game. They replaced him. Needing a big throw here from the freshman. Moore from his own end zone. Pressure coming. Moore steps up. Moore going to take a sack. Andrew Moore down inside his own five-yard line decided not to throw the football and is going to take a punt backed up against his own goal line. Again, excellent coverage on the back end of this defensive backfield. You know, played, mixed it up again on third down. Played a cover two. Not cover two, man. Played a cover two. You had underneath in the flat coverage. Safeties did a very good job on the hash, not letting anything behind them. So here is where Fred Adams could have an opportunity to bring one back. Morales, from the back of his own end zone, great spiraling kick, drives Adams all the way across his own 50, picks it up, somehow keeps his legs. Adams, working back toward the 45, you got to give a ton of credit to the punter, Raymond Morales, a huge tip of the cap that time. Yeah, excellent kick there by Morales. Um, when you look at Fred Adams, you know, he was standing pretty much close to midfield, and he had to end up turning and running, much like a baseball player, to try to catch that football. Dropped it, but had the awareness to pick it up and get upfield for some good positive yards. I can't say if that's exactly 53 yards based on where Adams caught it and then fumbled it, but that would more than likely equal or surpass Morales' standing season high of 53. So it is Northwest taking over close to the five-minute mark here in the second quarter with a two-touchdown lead. Starting at their own 45. Play one for Keegan Patterson. On the give, Xavier Davis. Busting through a man. Gets into enemy territory. Again, Davis is able to get outside, use his speed. Picks up eight on first down. And here comes Tempo again. Davis, left side, churning through yardage. Davis breaks free, still on his feet. Trying to go with a halfway spin move, finds himself inside the 30. Good vision there again by Davis. He loves those cutbacks, cutback lanes. He's able to go left and able to cut back against the grain right. Picks up the first down, breaks a couple of tackles. I love what I've seen out of the offensive line especially, but these running backs that are coming in, running really hard here tonight. And we have a Cohoma player down on the hash marks. That'll stop the churn of yardage for Northwest. Two touchdown lead for the home standing Rangers. Who are trying to build off of last week's win on the road against Delta. And push their way toward the top of the North Division. 
That was Logan Miles, the freshman backer out of Vicksburg, Mississippi, who hobbled back into the defensive huddle for Cohon. And to be honest about it, when you're getting beat and you're losing one and five, those hits, those big hits seem to hurt a little bit more. First down. Cohoma threatening. Here they come. The give anyway. Off the run blitz to Xavier Davis. Sliding past a couple of tacklers inside the 25. You know, on, on this particular time, when you look at Davis, you know, not looking for the cutback. He takes the dive, gets immediately upfield. And now we get another Cohoma player down. Who went to the ground late. I think this is Kobe Smith, who's once again seeing some issues, I think, with cramping and what looks like his calf if he's holding the lower portion of his leg there. Yeah. And when you talk about Kobe Smith, he has been all over the football field. I mean, he's been in the backfield. Uh, he's been in coverage. You know, he's, he's one of the bright spots on their defense. He's been one of those bright spots the entire year. So Smith's going to have to come off for a play. Northwest will break its impromptu huddle to go second down and short here. Patterson and Davis once again the tandem at the four-minute mark here in the second quarter. Crescent Moon hanging over a Rangers team that's trying to shine here in the first half. Pump fake. Zing left side, incomplete, intended for D.J. Harden. So well, third and short. Well, you look at earlier, you ran the same similar play, but you went to Davis on pretty much the wheel route out and up. Now you switch your personnel, you go to D.J. Harden, and the ball was a back shoulder throw, uh, incomplete. Third down. Northwest tonight. Decent on their third downs. The give to Davis here. Davis. Finds a couple of unfriendly Coahoma defenders in the area of the first down. I don't think he got there. Yeah, it's going to be close. I think it's probably going to be like a yard, long yard and a half. Gain of maybe two on the play. Northwest in four-down territory using tempo they're going to go for. Four wide. Quick throw. Left side incomplete. Intended that time for Jabryson Abram. And Stan Hill's got to be throwing down his play sheet in anger right there. Quarterback and receiver not on the same page. And we talked about the up-tempo, and you look at Abrams, you know, Patterson is looking for him to do a looky route from the slot, immediately come off the line of scrimmage and get the football. Instead, he ran into coverage, and that's going to be on the wide receiver because when you look at that coverage and up-tempo, he just wants to get the football in your hand. Now where you can be able to pick up the first down. Second turnover on downs in the half for the Northwest offense. This one comes three and a half minutes to play until the break. We'll see if this allows... Any ignition to build up, I should say, any gas to build up in the tank for Kohoma. Low snap once again. Here comes the rush. Moore bailing out. Not fast enough. Shoved down that time by big number 44, Devonye Lacey. Oh, man, great play by Lacey. You're talking about coming like a runaway truck. He's able there to run through, and I like the way he hit the quarterback. He didn't get the unnecessary roughness penalty. He just took his hands and shoved them to the ground. But he shot through that gap there like a missile. Second down, well south of the sticks. After Lacey, who's been solid athletically this year but has not had the production numbers up to this point in the year, starting to come on here in week seven. More, another low snap. More. Trying to escape. Going to be brought down from behind. Roped up by D.J. Burgess. I'll tell you what, this defense, man, is playing lights out. High motors. D.J. Burgess was on the ground, was able to get off the ground and make the tackle on the quarterback from the backside. It's 
third down and long after Burgess makes his eighth tackle for loss of the season. I don't know if that'll go into the books officially as his second sack. It looked like a passing down to me. But it brings up a third down and long as Kohoma takes timeout. Make it Northwest taking their first time out of the half as Benji Parker doesn't want his defense to do anything foolish that might ruin the opportunity they have here to get the ball back with considerable time and perhaps, depending on the punt, in their own half. Yeah, when you look at the head coach, Benji Parker, and you talk about this coaching staff, you know, this is a young football team, but they've been able to progress and to be able to make the adjustments each and every week. And the way this defense is playing, as a head coach, that's the way you want to be able to see your players uh, progress each and every week. Um, but this just is a marvelous performance here by the defense. Meanwhile, Andrew Moore has the entire world against him on third down and long. Ball's got to get to the 32. Right now sitting on the left hash, the 13. Let's see if the snap is low coming from Tad Walker. Decent snap. Pocket holds. Moore flings it. Incomplete. Batted down with one hand that time. A solid defensive effort by Ja'Cory Jones. Yeah, Ja'Cory Jones has the curl flat area. Reads the pass pattern outside. Able to knock that down at the last minute. This will be the sixth punt of the half. Sixth in a row by the Cohoma defense. Or I should say the Cohoma offense. Their defense having done the only scoring so far tonight. Morales got it away. Adams from midfield. Fred Adams with a stutter step, taking off his feet before he can get far. Still, Northwest with good field position, setting up at the opponent, 43. That's going to be interesting, Tyler, uh, the approach here by offensive coordinator Stan Hill. Pretty much been relying on the run, heavy dose of the run. Offensive line has been playing tremendous. To see now if he can speed it up and see if he's going to put the football in Keegan Patterson's hands and see if he can hook up with one of these wide receivers. Patterson, redshirt freshman out of Longmont, Colorado. Gets the football with 224 to play. The plus 43. First down give. D. Pertin spinning his way forward down to the 36. Gain of seven. Brings up a quick second down as they reset. Coming again. Pertit to the right this time. Bouncing back left at the last minute. Grabbed around the ankles after first down yardage. Good takedown that time from Logan Miles. That's the way to run the football effectively. Not throwing the football, but you're in hurry up. And you're still able to pick up some good yards. Again from the gun. Patterson. Thought about taking a shot here. Didn't have the window. Fires. Caught by Hobson. Hobson lost his footing a little bit sooner than he wanted. A gain of maybe one. Well, that's a good decision made there by Keegan Patterson. Initially, he looked at Hobson. He was covered. Hobson does a great job of covering himself and getting to the sideline, but Patterson did not try to force the football inside. Nice decision making by your quarterback. Second and nine. Patterson with a pocket holding. Let's fly right side. Incomplete. Another good play made by Nicholas Townsend, who broke on that football with anticipation just as they did on the first play from scrimmage for a pick six. Yeah, that's a good play by Nicholas Townsend, but also J.D. Ferguson. He was open outside. You have to be able to take an extra step and come back to the football. That could have been a costly mistake. That's on your wide receiver. you got to take a step back, catch the football, and get your body in between the defensive back. The wide receiver is here on third down. Kyler Hutton near side left. Rashard Daniels in the slot. And it is Jarnoris Hobson far side to the right. Working against Townsend in coverage. Back motions out of the backfield. A swing route to Bertine. Has blockers. Sheds a tackler. Spins and keeps his feet inside the 15. He's always going to make the first defender miss. And I like Keegan Patterson getting the football out of his hands. Immediately throwing it to Bertine in the flat. And he does the rest. A minute 11 to go as D. Bertine collects the first down for Northwest. Inside the Wade Incorporated Green Zone. Seeking their third, making their fourth Cannon Motors touchdown of the half.
The give once again. Pertit, legging through a tackle to the 10. Broke out of another one. D. Pertit is in. Touchdown, Northwest. Great job by D. Pertit. I talked about it, and I'm going to lube back to again. Looking like Marshawn Lynch. You're talking about breaking a lot of tackles and keeping his legs moving. That's an outstanding run. He's bottled up right there around the 8-yard line. He comes out of the trash for the score. D. Pertit doesn't have yards after contact. He has yards through contact. Extra point on the way from Jackson Usselton to make it a three-score lead here in Senatobia. And Pertitis, another one of those great running backs that comes out of South Panola. He's a young player, man. He's, he's an outstanding young player. You know, you don't really see a lot of true freshmen have the leg drive, have, have an understanding of the offense, but he runs so physical. Huge carry for D. Pertit right there to get the Rangers out to a 28-7 lead here on Ranger TV. We'll keep it here for a moment as they set up for the kickoff. Kind of like the offense respond, response to that first initial hiccup, throwing an interception on the first down from scrimmage usually does not spell good things, but Stan Hill calmed them down, mm -hmm. got them settled, got the run game going. That was the right answer. They definitely responded, and, and you talked about Coach Stan Hill, you know, calming his, his team down, but he, he relied on the run. He went to his running game. Offensive line did a tremendous job, and then you just look at the second phase of it defensively. Defensively was able to constantly stop this offense for Oklahoma, get the football back, uh, to the offense, so that's just great complimentary football here in this first half. So they will kick it off with a minute two to play here in the first half. Oklahoma has yet to do anything other than punt when they've gotten the football. From the 10, Tarek Latham across the 25, the 26. Fifty-seven seconds remaining in the first half. You know, offensively here for Kahoma, you know, haven't had much production, and Latham has been one of their big play receivers, and that's the first time he's had his hands on the ball all night, and that's on a kickoff return. How do you move the ball if you can't get the ball to your playmakers because the rush comes so quickly? I mean, it's just an outstanding job by this defensive front and the linebackers, and, you know, they're coming – so relentlessly in the backfield, it's hard to even get out quick passes to the screen to your wide receivers outside. I have not seen any of Jay Kelly this evening. It's been either Marquise Willis or Andrew Moore. It's Willis here on first down. Another low snap. Squibs away from him. He picks it up. He'll fire wildly across the middle. Picked off. Keyshawn Navilla has it. Inside the 30. Inside the 20. Inside the 10. Down to the 8-yard line. And Northwest looking to drive the dagger in here in the first half. And that's what you're talking about, the pressure the disruption in the backfield. And then you look at Malik Willis trying to make something happen, just throws the football across the middle, middle, the Villa right there for the pick. I thought he was going to get a pick six there, but that's an excellent job of him being in the right place at the right time. Marquise Willis doesn't have anything to lose by throwing that football. They've already punted six times in the first half. Admittedly, you set the other guy up if you throw a turnover, and he did so right there. But what choice does he have when your team's already down this much? Trying to make something happen. And something turns into something you don't like. First down and goal from the nine. Patterson looking to take a shot to the corner. Far sideline, leaping catch. Touchdown! The Northwest Rangers get another one from K.D. Gibson. The freshman out of Tupelo is first. K.D. Gibson does a similar thing. He goes up high, but Keegan Patterson, again, he does a great job of that fade, throwing the football high where only his wide receiver can get it, but that's an excellent job there by Gibson catching the football, going up high, getting his feet inbounds for the touchdown. Big night for the Tupelo Golden Wave alum getting his first college touchdown. Extra point coming. And Jackson Elselton will split it through. 35-7 after the Rangers claim the big turnover from Keyshawn Devella and a quick strike to KD Gibson. Back with more on Ranger TV.
What a turn of events here late in the first half in Senatobia, Mississippi. The Northwest Rangers leading 35-7 over the visiting Coahoma Tigers. Keyshawn DeVilla picking off Marquise Willis moments ago, returning it inside the 10-yard line. And Northwest punches it home with a short touchdown strike to the back pylon from Keegan Patterson to K.D. Gibson. Russell Copeland, if you looked at the first play of this game and tuned out after that, you might have been disgusted with Northwest. They have turned things around in a huge way. Absolutely, and, and that's the way to come back from adversity early on. I mean, when you get a pick six, your first possession, but not only the first possession, your first throw from scrimmage. Uh, but what a great job of answering, starting off with your defense, getting the football back, and what an excellent play call by Stan Hill, able to rely on his running game to settle his quarterback down. This is Jackson Usselton to send it away. Latham will field at his own 12. Tarek Latham got away from one guy, got away from two guys, trying to wait for something to open up, put the football on the ground. Flag flies late in the play. Does Northwest have it? I'm going to be careful here. Maybe a face mask call, but I think he did fumble that football. It is a Ranger football, according to the headlinesman. We have a personal foul call late in the play. I thought it was for a blindside block, but they motioned for first down for Kohoma. Did the referee simply point the wrong direction? Flag did come in very late. Might have been for a face mask, like you said, Russell. Referee's microphone was not turned on a moment ago. There is no flag on the play. It will be Ranger football. So yet another thing piling up against Coahoma. Another turnover, but great job by Jackson. Also, you talked earlier about the kick. He tried to kick the football to the sideline and went out of bounds. Excellent kick there by him. It was set up by him. Great job by the kick coverage. From the gun, Patterson looking, looking. Has room to scramble and takes it. Keegan Patterson weaving his way to the goal line. He's in. Quarterback keeper for a 25-yard score. Yeah, great job by Keegan Patterson. Now you talk about how he started the football game. That makes him feel a little bit better being able to score a touchdown. But that's the way you know, look downfield. No one is open. Took it upon himself. Nice scramble for the touchdown. How about six feet tall, 195 pounds, lowering the shoulder, getting to the goal line. Did not want to come up short. Would not be denied. Jackson Usselton, 42 Ranger points in the first 30 minutes of the contest here in Senatobia. It has been a Ranger rumble, all but the first play. And, you know, i tell you what, you know, when you look at that first play and you look at a team that needs a big break, Kahoma gets that break. And a lot of times, now you're in a dogfight early because you give up six points defensively. But this this football team that just shows the maturation, that shows the maturity level of this team. They didn't, you know, they didn't put their heads down. They went back to work. And you look at the score right now. You wouldn't have thought if you missed it. The first play from scrimmage was a pick six by Oklahoma. This certainly not a final game book that's going to be able to be judged by its cover. Northwest leading now by 35 going into the half, and still another play to come. You never know what's going to happen, given that Coahoma's turned it over twice the last two times they've had the football in their hands. And these are the type of games and type of plays that you need for a young football club to be able to know that you can come back from adverse situations. Let's try this again with Tarek Lake. From the 15, looking to hold on to the football, and does the 25. Oh, boy. 
Guys getting pulled off the pile late. Somebody rolled up on the head linesman. Got to keep your head in the swivel near that pile. 11 seconds remaining. Take a knee here if you're Allen Cross the home offense. I would. Anything to stop the bleed. It may be your best offensive play thus far. The reconfiguration needed. Andrew Moore into the safe formation will do just that. Cohoma will go into the break, trailing Northwest 42 to 7 here in Senatobia as the Rangers come back from an early, early play. That looked like it was going to cost them the lead. It did. It didn't phase them. Northwest on top, 42-7. Back in a moment on Ranger TV. That's well done on the gift. Everyone's journey starts from a different place, but the path to your goals is always Northwest. Northwest Mississippi Community College has more than 90 education pathways, so you can choose the training that's right for you. Need in-demand skills now with high-paying opportunities just around the corner? We can get you there. See a four-year degree in your future, but need an efficient path to that dream? We can get you there, too. Whatever your goals, we can help you become who you want to be. Find your path at Northwest. A new year means new ambitions, and you can count on Cannon Motors of Mississippi to make your goal a reality. With options to fit every taste and budget, now's the time to find the quality Chevy vehicle you deserve. The inventory Cannon Chevrolet of Oxford is going fast, so don't wait. Come see us and check a new Chevy Traverse or Chevy Impala off your list. And remember, when the smoke clears, nobody beats a cannon deal. Nobody. nobody. Sports injury, joint pain, spine issue, hand or foot trouble? No matter where you are, Specialty Orthopedic Group has you covered with convenient locations in Tupelo, Oxford, New Albany, Starkville, Batesville, and Senatobia, Mississippi. No referral is needed to schedule an appointment with one of SOG's fellowship-trained, subspecialized surgeons, and walk-ins are welcome for urgent orthopedic-related injuries. Call 662-767-4200 or request an appointment at SOGMS.com. Specialty Orthopedic Group. Choose a specialist. Choose SOG. can be beautiful, annoying, inconvenient, or worse. Oh, you need to get to your safe place at this moment. Trust the only local team with 80 plus years of experience forecasting your day, tracking storms, and keeping your family safe. When Memphis weather gets real, turn to the real weather experts. First alert weather, only on Action News 5.
Patriots playing today again? Oh, yeah. How come the, uh, the Presto stats still have it at the beginning of the first quarter? And the sign on stats, ah, that's it. That's it. Well, I wouldn't update you. Oh, they're spreading out too.
taking action for you every day. Your stories deserve to be told, and we've got the best storytellers right in your community. Shorts, reels, tweets, and content that play out live on TV or in your hand. You name it, we're on it. Get those stories anywhere you are. Here, 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 and of course, here. We're storytellers focused on Memphis, focused on taking action for you. Action News 5. Find us, well, anywhere. Wade Incorporated began in 1909 in Greenwood, Mississippi. Over the past 100 years, our family-owned and operated company has grown to 12 locations throughout the state. We've served generations of farmers, helped the weekend warriors keep their land and food plots in check, and met hundreds of new customers along the way. We've seen a lot of things change over the years, but one thing has always stayed the same. A caring team that provides customers with excellent service on an unbeatable John Deere product. Wade Incorporated, your North Mississippi John Deere dealer, delivering service, solutions, and success since 1909. Utility tractors from Wade Incorporated give the power you need and the comfort you deserve to make getting the job done a lot more enjoyable. Visit WadeIncorporated.com or contact your local Wade dealership today to learn more. We welcome you back to Franklin Field in Sanatobia, Mississippi, where the crescent moon is starting to just hide behind the clouds a little bit here as we trend toward 8.30 Central Time at halftime between the Northwest Rangers and the visiting Cohoma Tigers on Ranger TV. I'm Tyler Springs alongside Russell Copeland. Great to be with you here from Sanatobia in what started as a kind of unexpected evening with the Rangers falling behind early 7-0 as Northwest was... Taken by surprise with a pick six early on. Keegan Patterson throwing one into the hands of Nick Townsend to give a 7-0 lead to Coahoma. And that was essentially the last thing we heard from the Coahoma Tigers in that first half. Russell Copeland going to join me in just a minute. Rangers able to pile up 42 points after that. 42 points unanswered. And it's become an even better night, as Russell's going to tell you here in a second. You're a former... Tupelo Golden Way, Arch. Absolutely. We got Katie Gibson, Tupelo Golden Wave alum, with his first touchdown grab of the night. And if that were not enough, the homecoming queen just announced moments ago is a Tupelo native as well. Evie Crawford, who is second on the women's soccer team, the nationally ranked number one women's soccer team with 12 goals on the season. She's the homecoming queen. Well, that's, that's a great job. Great job tonight for Tupelo. It just shows what type of programs that they have in, in sports and athletics. But more importantly, you know, from an academic standpoint, but just really a good showing there uh, from the Tupelo High Golden Wave. Stand up. Love to see it. And uh, love to see the contributions on all different sides. When we take the focus on football, you look at that, tur that turning point, I think, in that first half. We thought it was going to be maybe more the same from last week, right? Another slow start for this Stan Hill offense. Another slow start for Paige Anders' defense, even though they had said, hey, they corrected some things at halftime last week against Delta on the road. They got some things turned around. They got things going in the direction they wanted. 
Then you throw a pick on the first play, and admittedly, it's a bit of a risk. It's a short throw, but it was a long throw to the sideline. Defensive back made a good play on it. You find yourself behind 7 nothing. The first thing you do after that is you turn to the ground game, and what an incredible salve that has been for Stanhill. Well, you, you know, I talked about it in the pregame. I thought that it would be imperative for the offensive line to be physical, especially at the point of attack and be able to establish the run. Didn't think the run would be established after the first possession with a pick six, but it's an excellent job by Stan Hill as a coach um, to be able to go to his running game, to settle down his quarterback. But then when you look at being down 7 nothing, you talk about Paige Anders' defense. You know, they took the initiative now, down 7 nothing. If they get off to a slow start, you're down to 14 nothing. They took the initiative, and, man, they've had a heck of a first half. Uh, on all levels, man. It's been an incredible thing to watch things turn around for Northwest as they have just piled up the points, especially late in this half. A 28-point second quarter for Northwest is what it's gotten them to halftime. Believe it or not, that's happened with Keegan Patterson having only eight completions on the night. Eight completions, three touchdowns for 80 yards. That tells you a little something of just about just how short the fields have been for Northwest as they have started a couple of drives inside enemy territory that's not their fault they just take advantage of where they are definitely and also you know again you have to go to the coaching staff you have to go offensively to, to coach stan hill you're not gonna you know go ahead and try to press the issue by throwing the football you rely on your offensive line and your running game you stick to what's working and 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 it has prevailed uh thus far you talk about the balance and some games are different some games you, you don't have that balance there's other games you may have to throw to be able to get the running game going but right now this offensive line has been dominant the running backs all have been running hard and defense has just played lights out northwest with touchdown drives of 69 40 74 43 9 and 25 yards the last two being one play drives each coming off of two Kohoma turnovers. Believe it or not, those are the first two Kohoma turnovers of the contest. They punted six times in a row, so it's not as though they'd given anything to Northwest. They just weren't getting anything offensively, but then they make those two late mistakes, and what looks like an insurmountable hole becomes impossible. Well, it's really, you have to give credit to the defense, these, these young players. Uh, you know, being technical sound, uh, they've, they've, they haven't had any bugs.